All right, email privacy. That's it. This is the email privacy episode. Welcome to the Q&A for Surveillance Report 191, where we are answering questions from our amazing patrons who help support this podcast and keep it free and consistent for all of you. If you would like to join the Q&A, we have a link to our Patreon down in the description, patreon.com slash surveillance pod. And this week, we only had one question from our perpetual regular, and I say that with love for the record, David Johnson. I don't think this guy's ever missed a week, maybe one, but David wants to know, this is a two-part question. So first of all, what means do you guys use to ensure email tracking privacy when using providers other than privacy-focused ones such as Proton or Tuda? For example, if you use Gmail or Microsoft when you can't avoid it, there are plenty of companies that openly advertise services like you can get notified as soon as someone opens your email and stuff like that. I guess we'll start with that part. Truthfully, I don't. I've been really fortunate. I think I've only ever run into one service that did not take a simple login, did not take Proton. I had to give them a Gmail. I don't know if that's because Michael Basil has speculated in the past that some companies might be using data breaches to verify that email addresses are real. So I don't know if that's why it was or if it's just they wanted a, a domain they recognized. But even when I do have something going to my Gmail, it forwards to Proton. I don't know if I'm really qualified to answer this one. I just... There haven't been a lot of things that haven't accepted simple login or Proton or a custom domain. And 99% of the time, if they don't, then I just don't want to use them. I, I don't know if there really is a great solution that I know of here, just reading about this. If you use something like simple login, simple login does add some layer of protection that I've seen, but not for this specific issue. Like simple login sometimes flags certain things for, I think, not passing DMARC and stuff like that I've seen. But that's not really this issue at all. So, I mean, it's it's kind of like if you were to ask us, you know, how can I use end-to-end -end encryption without using an end-to-end -end encrypted messenger? It's like, well, it's kind of a tough one to do. You know, you can obviously use one of those external apps where you send, you know, random gibberish to someone, someone else knows to use the app and it unencrypts the message for them. So there's always kind of a little workaround there. But I feel like it's hard to do this when the tools just don't implement that. I don't know of any like third party extensions or a way to essentially modify your Gmail account to be able to block these things. And I think that this is a selling point that uh, it's a selling point for these services. So I think that what I would suggest is set up an account with this, you don't even have to fully move away from Gmail. You can still keep your Gmail account, but set up your Proton and Tuto account for sensitive things that need more privacy. It doesn't need to be all or nothing. Proton, and I don't know if Tuda has it yet, but I know Proton has a one-click import from Gmail. So if you ever want to switch over, you easily can. I actually did have one thought occur to me real quick. Like you mentioned, it's it, you won't be able to get the full benefit, but I think there's still mitigations. So for example, a lot of them will pull just basic analytics. You know, what device are you using? What's your IP address? When did you open it? You can't really do anything about when did you open it, but you know, you can use a VPN, you can use Tor, you can use a privacy respecting browser that will obfuscate some of that information like Brave or Molvad. Ublock Origin, of course, also helps block certain trackers. So like Henry said, I'm, it, you can't really do much, but I still think just the basic advice, I would imagine I could be wrong, but I think it will at least mitigate some of the risk. I am not very familiar with this proof point thing that they're asking about. I'm seeing some info online about decoders as a way to like see what the link actually is perhaps, as a way to for you to verify the link before you click it. But I don't know if that's what you're referring to. I haven't seen this tool before. I don't know about Proofpoint specifically, but I feel like it's kind of the same, which is, um, so for those listening, somewhat related, what are your thoughts on privacy of email link protection services like Proofpoint that transform a generic direct sender's link into an absurdly long and irreducible link that is likely unique to you as a recipient? I think this is kind of the same thing we just discussed with like, um, so like in the first part, I think you were focusing more on like tracking pixels, for example. This is kind of part two, which is like a tracking link. I think again, I, I think it's the same thing. Either don't click it if you don't trust it, or you could try opening it in a privacy respecting browser, VPN, Tor, all that. If you really want to go hardcore, you can open it in like a virtual machine. And then any potential risk is just completely isolated. But yeah, I don't know of any way to like decode those links into a generic link. Well, I'm going to try something here because I found a service online called Spambrella. So I'm going through my TechLore trash inbox in Proton. Proton, when you click a link, it'll do a link preview. And a lot of times I'll do that. And if I see one of these link hider things where they don't actually give you just the whole site, I don't even respond. 
just because I don't think any company I want to work with is going to be utilizing those. Okay, I found one. So uh, Mr. Rick sent me an email here. There's a link here. Rick Astley or Rick Rubin? Just Rick. We're going to go with Rick. But he gives me this really long URL. There's no way I can even tell where it's going. So I'm going to use an encoded URL. There's a site. It's a decoder. Okay. All right. This one might work. So I stayed at a hotel recently, and they sent me a we'd love to hear from you kind of dealio. A little survey decode. Oh, it did change. Okay, yeah. So this decoder did do something. No, it didn't. Okay, maybe this is a specific. Yeah, so this tool. Okay, so after doing a couple failed tests here, I'm reading here that this test, here's the way it works. Copy the encoded link that starts with urldefense.proofpoint.com. Paste it into our decoding form, hit decode to obtain the original link. So it only works on Proofpoint? Yes. So that is a tool that you all can utilize to decode those links if you want without having to click them. But I don't have one of those links on hand, so I can't actually test that. That was a long way to get that answer. Hey, live experimentation. I love it. But yeah, in answer to your question, I, I think it's very possible that it might be I uniquely identifying you. So yeah, you could try looking up some link decoders like Henry just did, or you could just not click on it if you don't care. Like, Or you could, again, take some mitigations, privacy respecting browsers, Tor, VPN, uBlock. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, David, to asking questions. We appreciate you. We appreciate all of our patrons, even if you didn't ask a question. If you would like to ask a question next week and you're not already a patron, you can join the Q&A. Again, that's at the $5 level, patreon.com slash surveillance pod, and that'll be in the show notes. So if you're busy right now, that'll be there. Don't worry. It's also on our website, of course. And don't forget that we have added the signal group to the $5 level. So if you need more reason to join or you're interested in connecting with the privacy community right now, it's really small. It's really chill. It's really nice. A lot of cool people. So, so thank you guys again for listening and uh, we appreciate you and we'll see you on the next episode this coming weekend.